Um, this is just in regards to um, the detention centers that you guys mentioned. Um, instead of focusing more on uh, the conditions and the treatments inside uh, these facilities, um, do you guys think that we should focus more on when they get out of the jails and um, how they're secluded from society because of their records, like how the bridging programs that we can offer for them to get into society more quickly to be functioning members instead of being secluded and just going back right into the cycle? So the question, did you just read the question? It's about... The question is, what do you guys propose um, we do instead of funding too much on one area and then it being the other areas that are crucial in like not sending anybody or sending the population in lesser amounts to these centers, um, what you guys would propose, what type of programs that would be um, beneficial to kind of bridge them back into society as so members. Reintegration, yeah. reintegration programs. Yeah. So the first respondent will be Yasser Nakhbi. That's exactly what I was trying to get at, and, and thank you for, for bringing, uh, bringing that. That what we need to focus as one is to make sure that our, our youth uh, don't get into trouble with the law, right? So we need to make sure that there are appropriate programming to ensure that they are engaged and busy and doing uh, uh, fruitful things. And I'm not suggesting that everybody, uh, you know, sometimes they do get in trouble and, and we need to make sure that we're not getting there. Secondly, what we need to make sure is that through our criminal, criminal justice system where the government is really focused on is that not every time the solution is to send the kid to the jail. Right? We, we actually, a lot of time when we do that, we're harding them as, a, as more as a criminal by putting them in an environment. So there are other ways to ensure that they are rehabilitated, that they are reintegrated back into the society. Um, and that's why I was mentioning the, the work that uh, Chief Wan White is doing because he's a big promoter of um, other methods other than sending young people to jail. He's actually doing his PhD on that topic, uh, on, on various integration programs uh, that can be used and we are already working on them and that's something I'm spending a lot of time working with him because he's got the expertise is to ensure is to ensure that we've got the funding to do that program if we already got some pilot funding to, to make that happen. Give you a very good example of a program that's working very successfully is the Yippie program, Youth in Policing Initiative, uh, where we take kids from various marginalized communities from the city and they spend their summer working with the police so they can get a better understanding of how police function, they can build bridges, both police and the youth can build bridges uh, in terms of the various practices and create that deeper understanding and then obviously transfer that understanding and those skill sets within the community. Uh, it's a successful program, literally grew from like 13 students uh, to now about 50 or so students per year. So these are the different type of efforts that we need to pay to, uh, attention on because that's preventive in nature and will actually save money in the long run. She actually was asking about what happens after they get out of jail. She's asking about reintegration. Yeah, and then you've, you've got uh, organizations like uh, John Howard Society and Elizabeth Fry Society who uh, get funding from the provincial government to actually run uh, reintegration programs. And that is that's very important function uh, that play. And we need to continue to support those organizations because they are the one who are ensuring that various literacy programs, which are provincially funded, we just actually increase the funding for uh, basic literacy programming because a lot of these youth, uh, uh, when they come out, they just they haven't finished high school. So we need to make sure that they get those education. So organizations like John Howard and uh, Elizabeth Fry are very fundamental to that reintegration process uh, when youth and, and other uh, uh, people uh, who have gotten into trouble with law come back into the society. Okay, next respondent will be Alex Hill. Um, as has been said, obviously the ideal situation would be if you don't have people getting into prison in the first place, the next step is ensuring that the experience that they have in prison isn't training them to be better criminals, which is often the case. Um, I don't think there's any need to reinvent the wheel. We can adopt best practices from other countries. Uh, Scandinavia, Finland, and Norway, for example, have the lowest murder rates in the world, have some of the lowest crime rates in the world, and their prison sentences are very short. And they actually have some very innovative um, communities for prisons without walls, without fences, where they leave the prison on a boat every day, which is on an island, to go and work in a city. 
their interaction with the outside world doesn't stop the second they begin their sentence. And after a year or so in prison, if they're behaving well, if they're not causing troubles, they can enroll in these programs. Um, we had something similar at the federal level um, with prison farms, which were very popular. People were learning skills in prison, whether it was repairing cars and tractors, to learning how to grow food, um, to learning how to butcher meat, that they learned those things so that when they left, they had a job set up, they had skills. Uh, Yasser was mentioning literacy programs. I think those things are also very important. Uh, unfortunately, at the federal level, those programs are being cut back. I think that uh, it's critical to have uh, similar programs in prison um, in Ontario so that when they leave prison, they're in a better place. So they have more opportunities instead of being so. Very great. So the last response will be yeah, uh, just to, uh, in short, uh, an NDP government will, like, uh, when people come out of, especially in Ottawa, I mean, the Ottawa detention center I think is in turmoil, the status quo is not acceptable, so when, when the, our uh, young people come out and, and they finish their sentences, we have to provide an, an, uh, an appropriate, cultural appropriate, you know, programming that will reintegrate them. And I'm, uh, I'm, I can promise to you that I'm going to work with Canadian Somali Mothers Association and others who are working uh, uh, to, to bring those types of cultural appropriate interventions right after people uh, complete their sentences. Uh, obviously, John Howard Society and other organizations that existed uh, in the past and still continue to exist will support them, but uh, obviously the status quo is not acceptable while those organizations still exist. There's a need for, we had the, the statistics, you know, Aboriginal people over represented uh, in, in the jails, uh, immigrants the same, Muslim youth the same, uh, uh, I, I'm from the Somali community, the same thing. So there's obviously we have to do something. And so when they come out, we will have culturally appropriate uh, services and programs that will address those issues. And uh, prevention is always better than cure. So I think when we are failing our children and our youth is at the beginning, we, they don't live in a, in a, a very safe and, and healthy uh, neighborhoods because of the, the housing situation. And so an NDP government will, will tackle poverty because poverty is the core issue right here. So we, for example, one of the things that in our platform is we're going to increase the, the minimum wage. We're going to increase that so that you know, people will have you know, uh, enough money, or are they will, they, we will have more people who are not uh, uh, poor. So in that way, because this, the, the neighborhoods that these children are coming from are the neighborhoods that are socially economy, economically disadvantaged. So we're going to deal with that. When we raise the, the minimum wage, when we uh, bring social housing, uh, and, and we, 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 we actually maintain those houses, and we bring dollars to those communities, uh, and the tax that they, they paid, then things will change. And at the schools, we're going to improve the standard. Like, but we're going to make this, our schools equitable and accountable so that they don't fail our children. Because I think one thing we didn't mention is there is also lack of accountability when it comes to investing our dollars uh, in, in different areas like housing and, and the schools. So, an NDP government. Uh, and myself, actually, if I'm elected in Ottawa South, and all those issues are very common in Ottawa South, uh, riding. and the status quo is not acceptable. And I, we, an NDP government, will, will uh, attempt to uh, consult with the community and bring changes that the community needs, not changes that is imp are imposed uh, from, uh, from somewhere else. And, and the first one is culturally appropriate uh, interventions right after prison. Thank you.